All right. Okay, we are back. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Michael Lining. Last night I was on here and worked until about 1 o'clock in the morning on this new multi-track quartet of Finally Home, Stepping on Shore. If you would just give me a minute to get my bearings here. What you can't see on the screen is that actually that uh, is death by a thousand chords. All right, let me get everything pulled up here. Let me make sure I am on. See if I've got some people. Okay, sweet. Let me know if you can hear me. Looks like I've got two people on uh, right now. Okay, cool. Again, welcome. So last night I did a live stream for about an hour and I recorded all four parts of a hymn, um, starting from the melody all the way down to the bass, uh, baritone, and tenor. So today, to try to put a wrap on this, um, there was some editing that happened, of course, off camera. Um, after I got off the live stream last night, um, I uh, spent some time fine-tuning some things about the vocals, and so we're... Uh, pretty far along, actually, um, almost ready to actual film the um, the video clips that we're going to use for the YouTube video. So if you're uh, if you're new and you're wondering what in the world's going on, um, you'll want to go back and watch the stream from last night to actually see uh, all of these tracks getting laid down painstakingly with all kinds of problems and voice cracks and all kinds of fun stuff. It took a long time. Lots of starts and stops and edits midway through, but that's just the way that it goes down when you're making a YouTube video. Um, anytime that you're recording, you have to start and stop. Nothing happens successfully uh, the first time that you do it. So um, <coughs> welcome uh, the three people that are there. Uh, hello, um, Jawan or Wawran, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but uh, thank you so much for watching the stream. Had a good comment uh, about the stream last night. Somebody... Uh, was saying that uh, they wanted to see more of the editing process. Um, what I did last night was basically I uh, recorded the vocal tracks and then I uh, basically turned off because I had to go to bed. Um, but I still worked another hour or two after the live stream ended at about 11 o'clock last night. I worked until about 1 in the morning on some of these other tracks um, until I just couldn't, uh, couldn't work anymore and had to go to bed. Well, today is a new day. I've got a, a bit more energy today. And uh, what I'm going to be doing today, the order of, uh, of business, so to speak, is to um, get some of the um, fine tunings on the vocal tracks and some of the edits uh, fixed. There's still a lot of jump cut edit type things that I need to smooth out. There's still a couple of tuning things, which I'll go over um, for those that were interested in seeing more of how I do um, tuning and uh, a little bit of pitch correction and so after that once I have a finished uh, mastered audio then I'm actually going to try to film the uh, the actual videos that you'll see on YouTube and see if we can put them together um, <coughs> so bear with me I'm still fighting uh, some sort of allergy or cold um, but we're going to see how this goes down I don't know how long this is going to take um, I have somewhere to be at 430 so um, if I get it done before then, then great. Then if not, then I'll have to jump off um, and resume it. So hopefully um, this finished video of Stepping on Shore Finally Home will be done um, by tonight uh, because I've got to leave for uh, my grandmother's funeral, and that's going to be on Monday. We're driving to Cleveland, Ohio, um, and uh, we're uh, going to be going up there. So this is kind of dedicated to my grandmother, this song. 
um, finally home, stepping on shore. Let me play uh, what we have so far. And for the three that are watching, um, go ahead and share this video uh, so we can get some more people on. But let, let's listen to uh, what we have so far. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's, of breathing new air and finding it celestial of waking up in glory and finding it home when surrounded by the blackness of the darkest night oh how long death can be. At the end of this long tunnel is a shining light, for death is swallowed up in victory. But just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven of touching a hand and finding it God, of breathing new air and finding it celestial, of waking up in glory and finding Okay, that is the semi-finished uh, master, but there's still actually a good bit of work to do, which I'm going to kind of go through. Um, there's a couple spots that are definitely jumping out at me as still not being quite right. Um, when, you, when you do this for a long time, you learn to develop a really critical ear, and while that may have sounded just fine to you, there was a lot of things that jumped out at me that I need to fix, uh, so it sounds even better. Um, I'm going to kind of just piece through this, and uh, the next part of this video will probably be kind of boring, um, but you'll just base. I'm, I'm going to try to talk through what I'm doing um, so that you uh, hear the types of things that I'm looking for. Um, so to start off with, there's a couple of, um, so there's still some tuning things that are not quite right. So I'm going to try to find those and address those spots. What I'm doing right now, uh, these are fade-ins. And I'm, I'm activating a fade by the command key on my Mac, which controls this uh, drop down here. This is the pointer tool. That's what I normally use um, that you can draw boxes with and move things around. This second box right here uh, is where I have my fade cut and uh, automation tools. Uh, I use fade mostly to just kind of bring everything in together, kind of like this. When and now you notice you can't hear a breath there. When and it just kind of starts. So I'm going to actually move these back a little bit. So you hear what sounds like a natural. When and, by the and you may have to be on headphones to actually hear that. But um, if you're not wearing headphones, I recommend that you're wearing headphones so you can kind of hear a little bit better uh, what's going on. When and by the terror of tempestuous seas. Tempestuous seas. So something about this chord I don't like. I th part of it is just the hymn book part writing when you're when you're not doing an SATB and you're moving the melody down an octave. Um, some things get a little squirrely. So for instance, this chord, this little bar, this yellow bar here is a looping bar, and you can trim this to start and stop wherever 
uh, you want your loop to happen. So I'm going to basically section this part right here so it looped. Rob Tempest, Twisty. Rob Tempest, Twisty. Rob Tempest, Twisty. Rob. So the chord on Pestuous, Tempestuous, I don't like that. I'm going to try to figure out why I don't like it and figure out what I can do. Tempest, Twisty. Tempest, Twisty. Tempest. So there's definitely a good bit of dissonance there. Let me figure out what where the rub is that I don't like. Okay, so there's a rub there. Here's the bass part. So that's a major seventh right there. Well, actually, that's a, that's not a seventh. It's do, 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 do. That's actually a ninth, I believe. Let me check this on my keyboard here. Yeah, so that's actually... That's actually a nine. But it's in a minor key. So I should be hearing that kind of chord. Tempest with C. So let's add the next part down. I'm basically using this S to solo. Okay, there is the rub. It's in the baritone part. Let me go to the tenor part. So it's, it's okay right now until I add the baritone part. So I think what I need to do is actually... Let me pull up the, the pitch audio, the pitch uh, window here, which is the Flex Pitch in Logic Pro. That's where you can kind of move things around and, and, and tune things however you like. So let's actually retune this chord a little bit. So here's the offending note. Because the baritone part uh, goes, When, sir, when engulfed by the terror of tempestuous sea. It goes uh, from a B flat to an A flat. I'm going to actually try something here. Tempest. I'm going to leave it at a B flat and see if I like it any better. Tempest, twist, tempest, twist. Mm, I don't like that. Um, let me move it up to a C and see if I like it there. Tempest, twist, tempest, twist, tempest, twist, tempest. That sounds a lot better. Let me s let me show you that in context. When engulfed by the terror of tempest, twist, C. Now that sounds, I think that sounds a lot better. Of tempest, twist, C. And, and yeah, I did pitch correct that uh, up to a different note that I didn't actually sing. Uh, but in the mix, you cannot tell at all. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll at the end of doubt and peril. Okay, so here's another rub that I'm hearing right here. So something isn't quite in tune there. Let's figure out what it is. End of doubt and peril is eternity. End of doubt and peril is eternity. It sounds like it's between the lead and the bass. End of doubt and peril. End of doubt and peril. End of doubt and peril. End of should be a B flat to an E flat. End of doubt and peril. Okay, so the lead is going to a um, a D, and the bass is singing an E flat. So we have a rub of a half step. End of doubt and peril. 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 Actually, a lead of a, a whole step. End of doubt and peril. Because we have a, a D flat against an E flat. End of doubt and peril. Peril. Peril is e Peril is e So, let's see here. Peril is e What to do? Peril. I think maybe what we can do here is go to the lead part. Okay, so here's part of the problem is that I have so much vibrato in this note, which is a D flat. Um, that it's kind of all over the place. First of all, I'm going to try to flatten this out just a little bit. Peril. 
So there's those little knobs here where you can control the vibrato and you can find control the pitch and everything. Paralyp so I can actually move this down. I'm going to actually flatten this pitch a little bit. Maybe about 13 cents. Um, because in just intonation and barbershop tuning, um, typically your sevenths are going to be 13 cents flat. Um, and let's try it there and see if it's any better. It's already sounding a lot more pleasant. So part of the part of what you deal with with uh, equal temperament is things that don't quite lock. Um, whereas in just intonation, uh, things can lock a bit more. Um, but you have to kind of manually move things around. This is a lot different than um, auto tuning. Okay. Auto tuning, <coughs> excuse me. Auto tuning is where you basically take a uh, a computer program um, that listens to the audio and locks it to uh, the pitch grid and does it basically either in real time, uh, where, whereas this is manual uh, pitch correction and it requires a lot more fine tuning. Um, it requires an ear um, to know what you actually want. Um, and it gives you a lot more control, um, and it's actually a lot more work than, than auto tune, for, uh, believe me. Um, so yeah, so I'm 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 I know that uh, this this rub of of a whole step um, between a D flat and the bass and a and a uh, an E flat in the bass and a D flat in the lead. The the lead is below the bass here. Okay, so I want this pitch here to actually be uh, nice and flat, so that's a little bit further away. It doesn't sound quite so dissonant. I'm going to add the other parts back in. So now the, the third. Here's the third in the baritone part. So in barbershop singing, um, you'll actually... Tune the thirds down a little bit uh, by, again, by about 13 cents. But what's going on here is the overtone series. Um, singing with the overtone series, doesn't things don't necessarily lock and tune uh, in uh, equal temperament. So um, I'm, I'm tuning this in just intonation. So I'm going to actually pitch this thir major third from the bass is the E flat. This is a G. I'm going to pitch this down 13 cents. So it actually... Uh, is a little bit more consonant, just just a hair, but you can tell. And also, what I'm going to do here, the last part of this, you see how this is treated as one note, but you can see on the waveform here, it, the different words. So I'm actually going to put a, I'm going to change my um, with a with a keyboard shortcut T to get bring up my tools, and then five T five. I'm going to cut this. So that this actually, uh, and then the computer sees, oh, this is a different note, and you sang at a slightly different pitch. So I'm going to lock both of these back, and then I'm going to put both of these so that they match the tuning of that uh, that major third. This is, should be a, a G, and it's going to be 13 cents flat. So it actually, uh, and I'm going to flatten this one out a little bit too. Now, you'll notice here, there is this, in this chord, uh, this is a little bit of music theory. Okay, so right here, this note, this G, is functioning as the third of the chord, uh, the major third. Here's the bass. Uh. Okay, so here's the third. So I'm tuning this this G down 13 cents. So the next chord is actually a different chord. So the first chord, the first chord is an E flat. Okay, so in in the E flat chord, the G functions as the major third that's why i'm tuning it down just a little bit so it's a little bit more consonant and just intonation okay so this next chord here 
This is a different chord altogether. This is a A flat C. It's a major seven. Okay, so we have a A flat C E G. This is a major seven chord. This is an A flat major seven chord. And so um, normally in barbershop you have flatted sevenths, but in this case this is a major seventh. And even though it's it's the same pitch. It's actually tuned a little bit different. Actually, I might actually tune this one up a little bit so that it sounds, I'm gonna tune it up about six cents so that it sounds uh, definitely like a high, nice high major seven leading tone. Because a leading tone usually wants to lead you back up to the, you lead, lead from G to uh, that upper A flat. You hear that nice rub there? So I'm gonna, the, the leading tone wants to rise, so that's why I'm tuning it uh, up six cents, whereas when it was function the same note, when the same note was functioning as the major third, I tuned it down 13 cents. When it's functioning as the leading tone or a major seventh, I'm tuning it up six cents. So here's how that sounds in context. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. At Okay, so hear that? At the end of doubt major third, is major seventh. So the tuning changes ever so slightly, um, depending on how the note is tuned in the chord. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Okay, so let's bring the tenor part back in and see what that sounds like. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. No fear and Okay, so I fixed that part. Let me save my progress. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. No fear and conflict sees your weary soul. Uh, All right, let me just check this part here. Is your weary conflict sees your weary soul. See, something in the tenor part is not quite there yet. Let's figure out what what I missed. No fear and conflict sees your weary. So I believe. Do. So this is a G seven chord. It's a major third. Conflict sees your weary. Sees your. Sees your. Sees your. I'm gonna break this note into two parts here, and I'm first of all, gonna lock it in place. I'm gonna flatten it a little bit, um, vibrato-wise, and then I'm gonna bring this down 13 cents to see if it sounds better. Oh, fear and conflict sees your weary soul. Oh yes, I can tell the difference. So just to, just for context, here is. Uh, in equal temperament. Sees your weary, sees your weary, sees and here it is weary, with just intonation. It definitely sounds a little bit more consonant. You might not be able to tell, but I can tell. Sees your weary soul. Okay, the other thing is the moving is not together. Gonna move this. You can actually slide these notes whichever way you want to make them line up however you want. Oh. Oh. And then this is a uh, this is a barbershop seventh. So 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 this should be in just intonation, flat at about thirteen cents. Just and then, of course, these as well. But just think. But just think of stepping on shore. And you could tell where it flipped back to equal temperament here. So I'm going to bring this down. Basically, this is just fine tuning. Think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. It heaven. Of touching a hand and 
So something's not lining up here. Okay, so the tenor part's late. You hear how the tenor part's late? I'm going to move this handle here. I'm getting there. And finding the baritone part's late there as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this note here. So all my lining up I do in the uh, flex pitch window um, because you can control the pitch and also the timing. And when you're singing with yourself and making a, a quartet, um, the timing is, is everything to make a nice tight sound. Um, you you can do all of that in this flex pitch pi flex pitch window in Logic. And, and finding it got, got, so there's another another seventh that needs to be tuned down to just intonation. Right now it's an equal temperament. It got of breathing new air and finding it celestial. Let me check the bass part here. It's a last it's a last it's a last it's a last <sighs> What to do here? It's a last Let me take the bass out of the picture for a second. It's a last of course, of course, that creates a problem because you've got uh, now you've got the bass and the baritone a half step apart. So, what if I kept this note down here? Okay, well that that solves the problem, but now I've got to actually fix that part. That fixes the, pit, the pitch problem, but now it sounds fake because I moved the note. So now I know I just need to sing that note. It's a lad. And, fi and finding it's a lad. So I'm going to actually just retract that real quick. Breathing new air and finding it's a lad. Breathing new air and finding it celestial. Oh, I went back. I went up when I wasn't supposed to. So I'm changing the part writing a little bit from what's in the hymn book. Breathing new air and finding it celestial. Let me drop that part in here. And finding it celestial. All right. Let's fix that up a little bit. And finding it. And first of all, let's lock this into pitch place and then we'll fine tune it. So just dragging this. I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. Okay, so this corrected the wrong note. And 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 finding it and find started just a hair earlier. And finding it select. Bring a little bit more volume. And finding it select Okay, so this needs to move earlier. There we go. So now I just need to adjust the handle on my recording regions up here. 
and then smooth that out with a tr fade transition. All right, let's see here. And finding it celestial of waking up in glory. Okay, so these chords are really, really nice. They're really interesting chords. I don't even know what they are. I'm not analyzing them, but whoever wrote this knew what they were doing. Of waking up in so I do know that these need to be lowered just a little bit because they're flat in the hem. Of waking up in glory and finding it and find. So I'm just gonna this note kind of scoot and and and, and. So I'm just gonna bring the corner of that up and finding it. I'm gonna break this note into two and snap that in and finding it. The the smallest things in your voice are just you know you got to pick up on and finding it. When surrounded by the blackness. Oh, we have that thing again. By the blackness. Oh, what do we do? By the blackness. What do we do at the beginning? I forget. When engulfed by the terror of. Ah, that's what it was. 37. Do 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 do. Of waking up and finding it when surrounded by the blackness of surrounded by the black uh, the blackness of the dark by the blackness of the darkest night darkest night I'm not much of a bass but darkest night and there was some other note too in there and surrounded by the blackness uh, the title of the song is called finally home um, it is by uh, L.E. Singer, uh, Don Wurtzen wrote the music in 1942. When surrounded by the blackness of When surrounded by the blackness of the darkest night Oh, how lonely death can be at the end of this long tunnel is a shining long tunnel, long tunnel, tunnel. Let me go back to the lead part right there. Let's see. And the end of this long tunnel, long tunnel. I think I need to switch to the lead part here. End of this long tunnel, long tunnel, tunnel needs to be a little bit flatter. This long tunnel is a shining light. It's a shining light. Something's moving at the wrong spot. Shining light. Light. I think that's in the bear. Shining light. Let me move this. Light. Maybe I just need to extend it. Light for death. Light. Yeah, it's moving too fast now. Light for light for death is swallowed up in up in something in the tenor parts jumping out at me right there. Swallowed up in up in da da. This is a G7 chord. Here's the major third. 
Bring this down a little bit to just intonation. Is swallowed up. Actually, that sounds a bit worse. Uh, let's figure out. Up. 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 Sometimes moving things the other way can help too. Let's just look at listen to it both ways. Up is swallowed up in. Swallowed up. Hmm. Sometimes you just got to follow your ear to know where it's supposed to be. Is swallowed up in victory. Victory. Yeah, that way, sometimes you have to raise a note above where it's supposed to be just a little bit. It's a better contrast for the note next to it, which is a flatted seventh. So these are now further apart. But just think of stepping on shore. Stepping on shore. This is, this is moving. Stepping on shore. Stepping on shore. And finding it heaven. Moves just a little too fast there. I'm going to move this back. Heaven of touching a hand and finding it God's of breathing new God's of breathing new air and finding it celestial. Celestial. Need to redo that part again. In the bass. And, fi uh, and, and finding it. And finding it celestial. And new hair. And finding it celestial. And finding it new hair. And finding it celestial. You know what? And finding it, my bad. New hair and finding it celestial. And finding it celestial. All right. Had to fix that part. Sometimes you just have to record things again. Just. You know, you can you can only move things around so much before it starts sounding unnatural. And finding it. And finding it. And finding it celestial. Celestial. Move that just a little bit. Of waking up in glory. Of waking up. Of waking up in glory. And finding it. And, and finding. Move this note just a hair this way. And finding it. Bring out this low. Bring that out just a little bit more. I already brought it out some, but kind of hits you. And finding it all. Okay, so that's the tuning pass. That was actually the second tuning pass. The first tuning pass happened last night uh, between about. Uh, 11 and 1 o'clock in the morning. So that's the, the finer tuning pass um, that I wanted to show you. Someone was asking for some more uh, information on how I do that. Um, so that's a lot of listening and uh, a lot of um, just uh, n kind of knowing what kind of tuning you want, um, just intonation versus equal temperament. 
um, and understanding how barbershop tuning works, um, how um, how certain chords, certain notes in certain corn, I- I certain chords are tuned a little bit flat, um, just so that they are they line up with the harmonic series um, instead of the equal temperament of the piano, where things can rub a little bit more out of tune, even though it's technically in tune. That's why a lot of pop music that uses auto tune sounds. Uh, so bad <laughs> because uh, it's everything is snapped to exactly to the grid and it's um, not only that but it's you know there's no vibrato at all um, and so I I leave a lot of vibrato in my singing to make it sound uh, a bit more natural and as you notice I don't snap things to the grid um, it's not equal tempered certain things are tuned uh, flat and sharp in certain circumstances so that I can have control over the blend and uh, how uh, how in tune it actually really is. So the next step in this is actually to do an editing pass on the cuts. So there's a lot of hard cuts in here, a lot of double breaths and that sort of thing. So let's kind of approach each one of these cuts and um, and let's get things smoothed out. So I'm gonna um, turn something is okay. I'm gonna turn this thing off. So most of the time, a what a smoothing out a cut just means that you're gonna um, switch your tool, your editing tool, with the Option button or the Command button on your Mac. Um, this is Logic Pro. I've got a lot of great tools here available to me. I'm just gonna smooth these out by by creating a crossfade edit, and I do that on most all of these little things here. Anytime there's a hard cut, I do a crossfade edit, so it sounds a bit more natural. This one looked like it didn't work right, so I'm gonna try it. A nice uh, butterfly, uh, like a butterfly bandaid almost. These unknown waves before you roll at the end. Of and so we're just going to kind of smooth things, smooth out these cuts so that you can't hear the starts and stops. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. No. Okay, so you hear it, heard an early breath there. I think it's in the bass. Yeah, you heard that. All right, so I'm going to bring this region over, and I'm going to kind of fade this region out and bring this region in. Uh, it's still there, so it's in a different part. Sometimes what you have to do is just kind of cut these regions off early and then fade cut them so that you can't hear that extra breath. It's, it, it's, it's really hard when you're making a, a recording uh, especially of a multi-track acapella that you will um, uh, breathe at the same time. And so sometimes you have to use fades to kind of bring down those or take those out so that it only sounds like one person breathing or we're breathing together. So I think what I actually need to do here is bring all of these to end them a little earlier. Eternity. Yes. Eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul. Ah, oh that fixed it. Okay, so here's some more butterfly edits. Like I said, this is pretty fast. Weary soul. Soul. Oh, I just noticing now that the bass part moves too late here, so I'm going to bring up my pitch window here and fix fix that part oh, oh, so, so, so I'm gonna move this region over it'll kind of bring that with it so, there it is but just, oh, but just the okay so here's a, r- a really good spot where you can hear a clear double breath oh, you hear <gasps> You hear that? Okay, so let's fix that. Um, I'm going to put cuts, hard cuts, in all of the parts right here. And I'm going to roll this about to right here. I'm going to remove this butterfly edit. And I'm going to take this region, end it right here, and this one here. So I'm going to butterfly those down. The other problem here is that the lead part cuts off too soon. That's why uh, you can see the lead part stops right here, and the other parts go till here. 
And so I, what you're hearing is the lead taking a breath before everybody else took a breath. So to fix that, we can actually just go into the flex pitch on the lead part. So and just, I'm going to put a hard cut here, and I'm going to extend this note so it's not quite so... Um, Okay, that fixes it. And of course, now I need to butterfly this. I think that will fix it. Yes. And of course, these have to be brought in so there's no little pops or clicks there from the region starting. Butterfly edit here. But just think of stepping on shore. I heard a little catch breath there. Just think of stepping Yeah, see, there's a... Think of so one of the parts I took a little catch breath there. You can hear it. Think of stepping, stepping on shore. Think of stepping on shore. Think of stepping Think of stepping on shore. So it's in the tenor part where I'm hearing that little clip breath. Think of stepping Hear it. <gasps> uh, but just think stepping on shore. So to, there's a couple ways I could fix that. I could retract that as one phrase. Think of stepping on Think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. Maybe I'll do that just so it's so just so it's not quite so awkward. So I'm just going to duplicate my tenor track here. But just the and away I go. Oh, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. I need to do that again because I didn't take a big enough breath at the beginning. For weary soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. Okay, let's drop that in over top of the old region. But just think of stepping on shore. Eh, I didn't quite like that. Let's try that again. Oh, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. There we go. I'm going to bring that in here. Fade this in and just... But Check the pitch. But just think. First of all, lock it in place and flatten it out a little bit. But just think. These are. Think of these are sevenths, so I'm going to tune these down 13 cents. Barbershop sevenths. But just think of. But just think of stepping on shore. Stepping on, stepping on shore and finding it heaven up top. Of course, now there's a, a big catch, catch breath right here. I'm just going to, we got a double region there. So I'm going to fade this and fade that. Up touching. All right, there's this. Up touching a and finding it God's of breathing new air and finding it celestial of way Okay. Bit problem right here. So what ha needs to happen here is the lead cuts off too soon. So I'm going to actually... What I'm going to do is make a hard cut here and bring stretch this region so it cuts off with the other ones. Of 
course, anytime you stretch a region, you have to fade it at the beginning and at the end. Yeah, and then there's a catch breath that you can hear. So let me kind of smooth the catch breath over and the other tracks. Of course, there's another card cut here. And finding it celestial of wake. <laughs> now you can hear there's a. <laughs> Let's fix that. I think that's in the tenor. I think you can hear it right there. Yep. So let's get rid of that. I'm not sure what, <laughs> what I was doing there. Oh, it's not in the tenor. Where is that? It's in the baritone part. Insert baritone joke here. All right. Okay, so we're almost there, but you still hear this. You still. <gasps> so where is that? That's. It's in the baritone part. So maybe what I actually need to do. Let's put a hard cut here. Stretch the region a little bit. Soften this with a with a fade, and then roll that off before I get that catch. Okay, that fixes the breath, but now the moving is wrong. So to fix that, I'm going to bring this over. I should and almost there. Bring this over. Basically, we're just moving when it, when it changes notes. We're moving that that timing there. Okay, so we're, we've pretty much fixed this phrase, but now. Now you can't hear any breath at all because I took them all out. I, I do want some breath there so it's not like this just dead space. So usually I'll just keep one from the lead and see if we can hear one now. Maybe let's try the tenor. Or there's got to be. Oh, okay, I see that. Let me go back, undo that. Okay, so now I've got a natural sounding breath back. Okay, there was like three different breaths there. You're like, <gasps> <laughs> hear that? Let's fix that. I'm going to leave one of them, but I'm going to cut every single region in the other parts to kind of kill those breaths. We want one breath that sounds like it's together. Still hearing two breaths.
think that fixed it. A lot of this stuff is needle and haystack stuff, but when you're when you're making acapella on YouTube uh, or you know for whatever it is that you're doing, um, it's important stuff. You know how to do. Ben And finding his home when surrounded by the blackness of the darkest night of the dark of the darkest night. Remember we fixed that in the other darkest of the darkest night of the dark of the darkest night oh how lonely death can be at, can be at the just a lot of loud breathing going on there we kind of mitigate that a little bit be be at the end of this long tunnel is a shining light for death. There's another double breath. For <gasps> you know, sounds like a dying. <laughs> for for Bring this over. For death, shining light, for light, light, bear top party, light, for death is light, for death is swallowed up in victory. Okay, so I hear a random breath before victory. Up in vi <gasps> victory. I think it's in the baritone part. Okay, so what I can also do here, and I'm just going to stretch this region to fill out that space there, and then feather that in with a fade. Up in victory. Almost. So it sounds a little abrupt. There we go. That should fix it. Up in victory. But just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God. Okay, a bunch of going on. So these quite aren't lined up. So when I when you hear uh, when lining up S's and T's are pretty tough to do. But I can tell right now the problem is that the regions are different lengths. Like here's the, where the lead cuts off, the bass cuts off here. So they're all different lengths. So what I'll probably do here is start by soloing my lead and my bass, as well as my voiceover track, so you can hear what's going on. God. So sometimes you can tell which, you know, start with one track at a time. God. Okay, so the lead track needs to go longer. So I'm going to put a hard cut here with my scissors tool, and then I'm going to bring my flex pitch window up. God. Let's bring this a little bit longer. God. Almost. Let me try a little bit more. God. It's getting there. God. Of course, now I've got the God. breath. God. I think that will fix most of it. Of course, we got these massive breaths going on. And I might be able to actually bring this a little bit this way. Okay. This should also be tuned to it. Minus 13. 
Hot. Hot. Just like a lot of extra breathing going on. Oops. Hot. Hot. Breathing new air and finding it celestial. Hard cut there, feather this in here. And finding it celestial. Oh. Taking some breaths out here. Oh. Oh. Got another double breath here. I'm gonna I think it's in the baritone part. I'm gonna take that breath out. Feather these cuts here and finding it and find and find and find something's not quite lining up right there. And find Let's see which part it is. And find it and find it and find finding it. I think it's the baritone part. And find it. Bring this over a little bit. And find it. Now it's a little ahead. And, and find And find it. And find it. And find And find it. And find it. And find it. The bass part's also late too. And find it. There, there it is. And finding it all, it all. So there's like an early cutoff on the T's. I think right here. Let me figure this out. This is the bear. It, it, oh, it, and finding it, oh, oh, and finding it. So I took a really early cutoff on the lead part. Maybe, maybe the only way to fix that is just redo it. Nothing else is selected. Glory. And finding it all. Didn't quite like that. Let me try that again. Plus, I had the wrong track armed. Drop that in, feather this, check the tuning here. And finding it. And it And finding And find And finding a little bit quieter than and finding it all. Oh. OK. 
Okay. Thank Yes, I agree. Okay. So now we've got, I think we're pretty much ready to save this. I'm going to throw some outro. All right. Okay, so let's look let's talk about EQ for a second. Okay, so right now there's no EQ on these tracks at all. When I'm and this is a Shure SM7B microphone. Um, so I need to turn this track off here. Okay. So what I like to do, I have an EQ curve that I like to use for this microphone. Um, it's under the EQ settings under, I just call it default SM7B. This microphone typically is used for radio. And so it's, um, it, it has a, I don't know, a boomy kind of sound to it, which I like to roll off the low frequencies here. Anything below 200, there's also a slight dip, um, right around 400 Hertz, uh, that I like to take out. Uh, for a little bit more natural. So just to give you an idea of the difference in sound, um, this is with the, the microphone uh, with no EQ curve on it. And then as soon as I change it to this default SM7B, you'll hear the uh, difference, I, I, I think. It's, it's subtle, but you can definitely tell it should be a little bit brighter and it uh, should have a little bit more of the low end cut out so it's a little bit crisper. So I'm going to apply that uh, to all of these tracks here. I've already pre-saved this EQ curve. This will just make everything sound a bit tighter. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, Unknown waves before you roll. Okay, so let's talk about uh, panning. Um, I typically pan a, a quartet like this in barbershop quartet formation, and that's with the tenor on the far left, the baritone on the far right. Uh, well, actually not far, but, you know, plus 30, minus 30. The bass, I like to put him next to the, the lead, the bass is midway between them, and the uh, bear and, and the lead uh, is, um, you know, so so basically it goes tenor, lead from left to right, tenor, lead, bass, berry, um, and so the lead is minus ten, the bass is plus ten, um, so basically you have twenty steps between your uh, tenor and your lead. Thirty minus ten is twenty, and then between your lead and your bass you have 20 steps and then your between your bass and your berry you have 20 steps so it's equidistant uh, from the center uh, in a barbershop quartet formation now you'll notice that I have effects on every single one of these tracks I'm going to take the space designer reverb off of each one of these tracks individually and uh, in order to glue these tracks together uh, and better I'm going to apply a uh, reverb to my master bus, uh, which is this over here. Of course, my voiceover tracker will be affected by that as well. But I'm gonna usually with with reverb, I like to do uh, enough that y that you notice it, but not so much that it's too much like that. So uh, I'm gonna switch this. Uh, my favorite is actually the Space Designer. There's a lot of different ones you can do. Um, this sounds like a shallow cave or something. I'm actually going to increase the reverb time. So it sounds a little bit more like a church, maybe 3.2 seconds. And let that kick in for a second. Uh, of course, now it's still too much. I'm going to bring the dry signal. Um, I'm going to bring that down a little bit. So, And then I'm also going to bring the, the wet signal. This is the dry and the reverb, the wet signal. I'm going to bring this down maybe to 32 so that when I'm singing, it still sounds like I'm uh, in a nice uh, acoustically treated area or in a nice big church. 
but it's not quite so messy. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves bring this up just a little bit. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it. Just throwing some mixing in here, just listening for the part notes. touching a hand and finding it God's of breathing new air and finding it. Celestial of waking up in glory and finding it home. All right, so now I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and export this and, and preview it in, in Audacity just to hear it in a different program just to make sure that everything sounds the way I want it to sound. So I'm going to bounce this from region position number one to position number 76 just to give enough time for that reverb to die off. So one to 76, I'm going to do a bounce. One through 76. Folder for now. All right. Now I'm going to turn my my reverb off so I can actually talk. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pull it up in Audacity and listen to it. There's a couple things I might do uh, once it's completely out of logic in Audacity, um, just uh, uh, mastering wise, but we'll listen to it and decide what to do. Okay, so just looking at it in Audacity, there's already some things I could tell that I need to do to it. For example, looking at the, the waveform of the master, there's a big spike right here. I don't know what that is. So I'm gonna make sure that you can is can hear um stepping on shore and finding it heaven of touching a hand and finding it God's of breathing new air and finding it so I'm noticing listening to it in audacity that the reverb sounds like it's a lot more sometimes you'll get that and you have to dial back on your reverb so that when you're mastering it, it doesn't take over your mix. Finding it heaven of touching a hand and finding it God's of breathing new air and finding it select. So I'm going to resave this with um, dialing back the reverb a little bit back to 32 or 33. Sometimes the way it sounds in Logic is not the way that it sounds once you've actually saved it. One through, what did I say, 76? All right, let's listen to this. Um, turn my reverb off. Let's bring it back into Logic and take a look at it. Yep. Or I should say Audacity. 
When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown way. Yeah, much better, much better. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is put a a, a compressed a, a compressor on the master mix uh, in a, in a separate program. I like to do that in Audacity. Nothing too much, but you know I'm not going to go like a six to one ratio. Just like a two to one or two, you know, somewhere down in here. Basically, what you want to do is these spikes here. You see that there's spikes here. We want to kind of bring these spikes down and bring the rest of it up a little bit. There's a big spike here at the beginning. Um, this just kind of helps level everything out. Um, and I do a pretty quick attack and release time. And so let's see what this does to it. Okay, so you can see it brought the rest of everything up. So everything's a little bit better equalized, or not equalized, but a little bit b better leveled. Um, and let's listen to the mix. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven of touching a hand and finding it God's of breathing new air and finding it celestial of waking up in glory and finding it home. When surrounded by the blackness of the darkest night, oh, how lonely death can be. At the end of this long tunnel is a shining light. For death is swallowed up in victory. But just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's, of breathing new air and finding Celestial of waking up in glory and finding it home. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is actually film the video. Um, to do that, let me show you a little bit of my setup in the room. So I'm going to um, go ahead and switch this over. I'm going to kill the screen capture. And I'm going to make this so you can see what's going on. Okay. All right, so here's what I have uh, set up so far. Um, behind me is a movie projector screen, which you can kind of see the room. The room is a disaster right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, my camera, here, let me show you my camera. This is, I've got a ring light in front of me. I've got a camcorder uh, on its side. Uh, it's just a standard Sony consumer camcorder. And I literally, <laughs> I got this wide angle uh, lens adapter that I got for my nice camera, which is, ironically I'm not using. It's over there. And for some reason it didn't turn on today. Um, I'm a little worried about that, but this will be my backup for today. It's a pretty good camera. Um, it's not HD or anything, but for what I'm doing, it's do it's okay. I literally have the wide angle uh, lens adapter taped to it, um, but it actually works pretty well. So looking uh, from this direction, 
um, you can kind of see um, the uh, camera, and I don't know if you can see the screen, but let's um, you can kind of see the, the view that I'm going to get. Um, I've got uh, my microphone here. I'm doing a white screen today instead of a black screen. Normally my videos have a black screen, uh, but today it's uh, it's going to be a white just because I'm going to try to do some sort of effect uh, with a with a lighter background, uh, something with heaven, but I have absolutely no idea what it's going to look like yet. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to sing through this hopefully only four times, uh, one, one time for each part, and... Um, I'm going to hit record and just go, and I'm going to be able to see. I'm going to basically watch my screen and look at the hymn book so that I'm getting my timing and my cues and right and everything. Um, this can actually be um, pretty <laughs> – I can mess up a lot, okay? <laughs> um, but it's it's fun. So you can see um, – you can't actually see the, the view on the camera yet, but once I uh, have done, uh, I'll pull the files – uh, over it to Adobe Premiere. We'll switch over to Adobe Premiere, and uh, we'll actually make the video, uh, which hopefully shouldn't take too long. Um, looking at the time here, it's 2.12 Eastern time. Uh, I have somewhere to be at 4.30, so hoping we can pull everything together quickly. All right, so um, let's try this. I try to have the headphone cord behind my back, um, but it's tangled around who knows what right now, and if I pull it, probably everything will fall. I don't want that to happen. All right. So um, some YouTubers look at the camera while they're singing. Um, I don't – I've never felt too comfortable doing that, mostly because I wear glasses and the lights always reflect my glasses. Um, and then there's this also thing about this, this third wall, which, um, you know, like some YouTubers look directly into the camera while they're speaking and singing to you. And while that can work – um, sometimes I think it's a little bit more effective just to look off camera or look at the hymn book or something. Um, there's a YouTuber named uh, Michael Eldridge that has a channel called Acapeldridge, and he never looks at the camera, and his videos are crazy viral. I mean, uh, millions of views on, on uh, YouTube and Facebook, and uh, some other YouTubers look at the camera. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, this one I'll probably not. Um, on a couple of them I have, but I've not been wearing glasses so we'll see what happens um i'm just gonna kind of look off to the side actually be looking a little bit more at the um let's see here i'm gonna turn my microphone stand so i'm not killing myself here definitely want the microphone in the shot maybe not too much of it though actually there's not too much i can do and i want there we go that's a decent look right there and uh, we'll see. Okay, here goes nothing. Basically, here goes nothing. Um, here we go. And I'm going to zoom in on my screen so I can see the waveforms and that sort of thing. So I'm going to hit record on my camera. And here goes take one of the lead part. And I actually will sing. This is not lip syncing. I am singing along. Uh, but I'm singing along to a track so that I know exactly where everything is. All right, here goes nothing. Make sure you can still hear this. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's, of breathing new air and finding it celestial of waking up in glory and finding it home when surrounded by the blackness of the dark 
darkest night. Oh, how lonely death can be. At the end of this long tunnel is a shining light. For death is swallowed up in victory. But just think of stepping on shore and finding in heaven, of touching a hand and finding it cut, of breathing new air and finding it celestial. All right, so I always leave a little bit of lag time at the end so I can do nice little fade outs and transitions. And um, that actually went pretty well. There was one spot where I came in a little bit early, um, but, you know, it, it was okay. It was pretty good. All right, so I'm going to go um, sing the uh, bass part now. Try to do these back to back as much as possible. Same thing, bass part. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll, at the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God, of breathing new air and finding it celestial of waking up in glory and finding it home when surrounded by the blackness of the darkest night oh how lonely death can be. At the end of this long tunnel is a shining light, for death is swallowed up in victory. But just think of stepping on shore and finding in heaven of touching a hand and finding it God, of breathing new air and finding it celestial, of waking up in glory and finding All right, that was the bass part. I think someone came in here. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's, here goes with the uh, baritone part. You get to see the same thing four, <laughs> four times in a row. Okay, here we go. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, 
unknown where I'm gonna do that again. Before you roll. I, that, I wasn't with it that time. Let me try this one more time. Sometimes you have some bad starts. When and cough by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's, of breathing new air and finding it. Celestial of waking up in glory and finding it home when surrounded by the blackness of the darkest night. Oh, how long. Death can be at the end of this long tunnel is a shining light, for death is swallowed up in victory. But just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. Of touching a hand and finding it God's, of breathing new air and finding it celestial, of waking up in glory and finding. All right, and uh, the next thing would be the tenor part. This is actually going pretty fast because I'm not having to start and stop too much. And my chord came in front of me again. Tenor. When <coughs> was it ready? When and caught by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's, of breathing new air and finding it celestial of waking up in glory and finding it home when surrounded by the blackness of the darkest night oh how long death can be. At the end of this long tunnel is a shining light, 
for death is swallowed up in victory. But just think of stepping on shore and finding in heaven, of touching a hand and finding it cut, of breathing new air and finding it celestial. Okay. I'm hearing a click in the track. Hear that? All right, let's bring this back down so you can see my screen again. And if you're still watching this, <laughs> I almost feel sorry for you, but uh, I hope you're learning something because uh, it's brutal to just do this for this long. Uh, but yeah, every single YouTube video that I make I want to say it takes between four to six hours uh, of work, even for just a four-part hymn. And, <laughs> um, and this one's a simpler one. Uh, there's some that have eight, 16, 24, 32 tracks. It's tough. I mean, it's I like doing it, but it takes a long time to do. All right, so I want to show you something that I'm noticing that there's this click at the very end of the song. So I have to actually isolate where that's happening so i know i put some compressor on this and everything but uh i'm gonna have to go back to logic and figure out where that little click is happening and and re-export this all over again I think I found it. It's in the bass. Okay, put this one back on. Yep, there's another one. So there's two of them. I'm going to brush this over here. And the tenor, make sure there's no little clicks there either. Put it with the space designer back on. That's better. All right, I'm going to export this again. It, doesn't affect my video footage at all. One through seventy six. And finally home. Hey, Keenan. Hey, welcome to the stream. Uh, you've probably been hanging in there for a while, but thanks for the chat. I appreciate your correspondence with me earlier. Okay, at this point, um, what I'm going to do is go back and um, since I re-exported it from Logic, I'm going to drag that back in here and put that compressor back on and just double check to make sure that that's that little click that I heard at the end is not there anymore. Oh. 
Yes. Okay. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas. So I'm going to just play with some more EQ settings on the master just to see if there's anything I can improve on. I'm going to start with a flattened EQ. And um, let me just listen again. When engulfed by the terror of... It sounds a little bit saturated in the mid-range, so I'm going to kind of just draw a little... Not too much, but just a, sounds a little oversaturated in the mid-range. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous sea... Maybe it could use a little bit more punch in the upper register. Not too much again, just little things. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous sea. And maybe a little bit more away up here. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous sea. Yeah, I think that, that helps. There's just a little bit more crispness and a little less muddy. And that's what you want. Of course, I need to undo that because I need to do that for the whole thing. So that this is this is what you'd call a mastering curve. And I could probably roll off some of the... Even though I already did, just to make sure there's no frequencies coming back. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown way. I'm satisfied with that. So, okay, now I'm going to export this to a WAV file. And let's see here. Okay, so now the fun begins. So first of all, I'm going to connect my camera to my computer. And let's see here. Does that reach? And USB connect. We sh should get a, uh, so here is the footage. Give it a second to pop up here. Oh, I think it needs to be in this. I think I did this wrong. Sorry. I think I mounted the SD card of the camera I wanted to do the hard drive. One more time. Here we go. This looks better. There we go. It's all kinds of footage for all kinds of other YouTube videos on here. These are MPG files. I may have to convert them. Oh, and of course the date is wrong on all of them. Let's take a look at a few. I'm gonna guess it's the last four because they're about the same. Sometimes they're gonna, I'm just going to drag them here to the movies folder. All right, tell me what you think. Um, tell me your questions. Um, what would you like to learn more about uh, or, or see? Um, 
like I said, this is just uh, while we're while we're copying files here. Um, send me something in the comments. Uh, let me know what uh, what you're interested in and what what you're interested in seeing. Kind of music you like. Um, yeah, I enjoy doing this. I've been doing this since uh, about 2013. Ever since I figured out how to put videos together and. I've been recording music since 2009 uh, when I was in college, um, and that was 10 years ago. All right, let's take a look at these at this footage here. It was MPG. These MPG files. Of course, they're sideways. Of course, the audio is terrible, but that's to be expected. And the color is off. We'll, we'll fix all that, okay? So here they are. One of them is like 17 megabytes. This one is a bad one. Okay, so we have these four footage files to work with. Not the best camera, probably not the best footage, but uh, it will work for this. So first of all, I'm going to see if... These are importable as raw files from my camera into Premiere. I don't typically use this camera because um, it's more of my backup camera, but let's figure out um, if they'll work. So I'm going to open Adobe Premiere. I'm going to go ahead. I guess I have to leave Logic open because you need to hear the voiceover, and I have to leave that open. So I'm hoping not overload my computer here. I'll close this. Adobe Premiere is um, a nice program to use. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, it costs like, I wanna, with all of the Creative Cloud All Access apps, I think they're like $59 a month. I also have Final Cut Pro. I used that for a while. Adobe Pr Premiere has a little bit of a faster workflow for me. Um, and I, I actually have it because um, it's paid for by the business that I work for on the uh, full time. Um, but I, I use it for other stuff too. Um, so we'll give it a shot here and uh, see what uh, what we can do with Adobe Premiere um, to make this YouTube video. So this is actually going to be how you actually see what goes on YouTube. Thanks, Keenan, for the uh, comment. I feel that was quite com comprehensive and informative. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. All right. Come on. Here we go. New project. All right, so first of all, let's drag our project in here, import media to start, and see if these video files will drag into Premiere. They're MPG files, so hopefully they will. Doing something. Didn't like it, huh? Oh, it's still doing it. Okay, they're working. I'm going to rearrange this microphone a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do in, in my Adobe Premiere sequence, make sure you can, make sure you're seeing all of this, is to put my audio track in. Okay, that creates basically what we call a sequence. Um, in this pro, every program is every video editing program is different, but this is a sequence um, where it will. Um, the sequence is actually the file that gets uploaded to YouTube. And I need to somehow turn my volume down. Okay, so you 
doesn't look like you can actually hear what's coming out of uh, Adobe Premiere. So let's change that. Audio. I want multi-output device. Okay. Seas, unknown waves before. Okay. So let me go ahead and turn this up so you can hear me a little bit better. I'll be able to turn this up so you can hear me there. Are you roll at the end of doubt and peril is eternity? Just want to make sure I'm not distorting on you. Okay, so here's what we're going to do first. Um, let's find the first video, which should be 57 in the sequence. So we got 57, 58, 60, 61. I'm going to drag this into the sequence. Of course, it's not going to let me do it right away. It's got the unavailable thing on there. Um, if you're ever working in Adobe Premiere and you get this bug, you, sh you can get past it by right clicking on this on the file. We're going to create a new sequence from clip, which will put it over here in its own little sequence tab. For some reason, that tends to work better. Um, and the here, I can trim it up to where it starts, which is somewhere right in here. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous sea. Okay, so you can hear what's going on there. I'm just going to copy and paste this um, onto this sequence window. Of course, when I paste it, it's Adobe Premiere does this weird thing where it uses the first available track. So you actually have to lock the track uh, for the audio not to be overwritten by the paste. So when I paste it, you'll see it gets put in down below. Now what I need to do is I'm going to drag this handle in. Keep an eye on my time here. And I'm going to try to make the audio line up with the uh, original video. Sometimes you can tell just by looking at the waveforms where it needs to go. And let's see. At the Let me see what my sequence settings are. Okay, 2997. Let's. We need to make this um, 1080p. Let's see where it's. Um, I'm going to do frame size of square pixels. 1920 by 1080. Okay. That's all right. And up out and peril is eternity. So obviously I need to rotate this so we can see what's going on. So I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees up, up here. E, though fear and conflict seize your weary soul. And then of course we need to mute the camera audio. But just think of stepping on shore. So I could tell that the audio is a little bit ahead of the video, even though it looks like they're lined up. Sometimes you'll get that. I'm just going to drag this back a little bit, like maybe two two frames, three frames. Lord, and finding it heaven of touching a hand and finding it God's of breathing new air and finding it celestial. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Um, so what I need to do here is kind of uh, work on the color and uh, the background. The background kind of looks gray, but that screen is white. Um, I'm not the best with color grading and that sort of thing, but I'm gonna start with the color balance and uh, brightness and contrast and see what we can do with the look of this uh, video. First of all, let's just give it a little bit more brightness and a little bit more contrast, give it some more pop. Of course, that increases the red highlights on my face. It makes, makes my face look a little bit more red. So I'm gonna bring the reds down to maybe negative 12 on the midtones and the shadows. Again, this is stuff that it's just very small changes, but just taking a little bit, taking a little bit of red out. Of waking up in glory. My face still looks red. I'm gonna try to. That's too much. 
sometimes if I can't get it right there, I'll just take the saturation out. Um, let's see here. Sometimes you can do that with tint. Um, but I don't want it to... So this is with maximum saturation. This is with no saturation. It's black and white. I try to find a happy medium, maybe like 25, 27. I don't want to look like a pale ghost either. And finding it okay, so that's pretty good on the color. And, um, as far as framing goes, I'm going to crop this in a little bit. Um, I need to crop down from the top so I just see the white background. Um, crop down from the top a little bit. Of course, because it's rotated, the top is actually the side. So I see I get, get rid of that little black thing there. Um, and then from the... Um, I guess I need to go from the left to actually get the top. That way I get a nice framing there. And... Let's see about edge fading. Make a cool little window look like that. I'm going to move this around. Typically, I move it. Typically, I have um, tenor, lead, bass, berry, like that. Um, we'll, we'll get it squared away. I've got to leave some. I'm going to scale a little bit. i got to leave a little bit of room for the title, and I like to put the words at the bottom of the screen there. Surrounded by the blackness of the darkest night. All right, so now to a point where let me trim this up uh, here. And I'm going to put in my other footage now and we'll duplicate the effects. Um, when I so let's go to 58, new sequence from clip. I'm going to close this other one. I'm going to save my progress here. And I'm going to new sequence from clip. Gonna bring this right uh, right there. When engulfed by the terror. Okay, so this is the base part. Of tempestuous sea. I just slaughtered that one. Um, okay, it doesn't matter if it's, it's just singing along for the camera. Um, okay, so let's copy this and bring this over to this sequence here. And, of course, we need to lock this track. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to unlink this. Um, unlinking in Premiere just means that you're, um, this video is linked to this audio, which is from the camera. So I'm just going to unlink those two so I can delete the camera audio and leave the video track in place. So I'm going to mute, uh, uh, mute or lock that track and paste uh, the bass part in and bring those in, get it lined up initially, visually, and then we'll, you know, link it up um, with s s some synchronization here. Let's see where we are with this. Of course, I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, that's not the, this one. I'm going to... Turn that track off, so I'm just working with this one without any drop frames. These unknown waves before you roll. I'm saying pretty close. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and unlink this. I think we've pretty much nailed it on the sync. So I'm going to take that audio out. I'm going to copy this videos video attributes and paste them on this one paste attributes we did color balance brightness and contrast tint and crop we want all those settings to be the same so now watch this i'm going to move this one like like so so we have lead and berry. No fear and conflict seize your weary soul. But just think 
now stepping on shore and finding it heaven. So you notice that my playback is getting choppy. That's actually to be expected because it's processing two different clips um, with a bunch of different effects. I can kind of mitigate that by muting the delete track. Of touching a hand and finding it caught. Also, this is a 2012 Mac Pro with a quad-core Xeon, but it's still probably not up to the task with the um, graphics card I have in it to render smooth playback with a bunch of different frames and effects going simultaneously. I also have Logic Pro still open and Chrome still open. Uh, and OBS still open. Of breathing new air and finding it. Okay, so let me just make sure this one is... Okay, so let me bring in the next part, which is 60. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous sea. So this is the berry part. And again, same thing. I'm going to lock this, lock this, paste. I'm going to visually line these up as best I can. I'm going to turn this other track off with a little eyeball. When and by the terror. Uh, it's not quite there yet. Let's move this. I think it's a hat, actually. Terror of tempestuous seas. Unknown way. I didn't know what note that was because I was looking at the music. Waves before you roll. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul. We're pretty much right on the money. Um, maybe like one frame off, but we're pretty close. So let's go ahead and grab these video attributes, paste attributes. And I'm going to slide this way over this direction. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas. Unknown waves before you roll. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul. But just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. Of touching a hand and finding it God. Of breathing new air. All right. I'm not going to screw with that one too much. I'm just going to check the sync on it. Of tempestuous seas, tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll. Maybe it could go one frame to the left. Like literally one frame. It's so close. Oh, there's two frames. Oh. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul. But just think of stepping on shore. I'm going to go one more frame to the left. And finding it heaven. Of touching a hand. Okay. Time for the last part here. Which is 61. Then a new sequence from clip.
When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas. Tempestuous seas. Goodness. Alright. Lock. 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 Paste. And bring this over. Line this up. Mute this track. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roam. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. Though fear and conflict seize your weary soul, but just think. That's pretty rough. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to how I was singing, but, you know, it is what it is. It's all right. Okay. Let's grab uh, my video attributes from my first clip. Paste the video attributes here. Okay. And then we can slide this one over this way. So now let's make these look like a Michael Lining video. With the same amount of space. Actually, I think all of them need to slide over. Let's see, this one. Oh. Equal distance spacing. Kind of OCD about spacing. Of course, I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not like measuring it out, but there we go. Right there. Okay. So now. Make sure we're trimmed the same at the ends. This one, I'm going to unlink. Okay, so we're going to put some fade ins and fade outs. Um, let's see. Cross dissolve. I'm going to put cross dissolve as my video fade at the end, at the beginning, and at the end of each track. This is a very simple video with not too much special effects or anything else going on. It's just four guys singing. I'm going to get rid of this. And we're going to go here. 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 And here. So they should come in together. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas. Okay. Slide that. Oh. Yeah, right. It was bothering me a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now um, I'm going to add the titles uh, at the top, and I'm going to add the, um, the lyrics at the bottom. So to do this... Um, what we're going to do is use my text tool, and I'm going to create a text region at the, um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and mute all of these except for the lead to save on resources and graphics <laughs> rendering and all that stuff. So I'm going to enter this text up here. I'm going to get my text tool, and I'm going to start typing. Finally home of course i'm going to center that up so to center that up you can go to essential graphics right here that brings up a different tool palette i'm going to click this button here horizontal center and uh, we're going to pick a nice font for it and let's see i don't have a whole lot to work with but i've got enough to pick from let's 
something nice and uh, cursive-y. Going to move this down a little bit. I don't know if I can use that or not. Maybe if I make that a little bit smaller. Well, see, the problem is that the Y comes down so far. I like the look of it, but it just comes down so far that I need to put text underneath it. Some of this is just design aesthetic. Um, you're like, pick this, pick this, pick this. That's that. That's what I'm using. Uh, what's this? As I've used that on several. I don't have a whole lot of really nice cursive e things. Oh, I don't know. I'll just have to pick something soon. That looks good. I like that. Of course, I got to center this up again. I'm going to put this up at the top and center it again. And then I'm going to add another region below it that's going to be actually a different font. I'm just going to start typing. And something that's a little bit more of a standard. Uh, Uh, bold. No, we don't want bold. We want medium. No, I think I want regular. Okay, something like that. I'm going to type the information about the song, which it is. Um, L E C R. I'm going to put the copyright information on the song. Just being a stickler, I like to actually get the symbol. Copy that. Copyrighted 1971. New spring. So these lines here, actually need to do this and then this. And then I'm going to make these a whole lot smaller. Oh, goodness. Oops. can actually change the spacing below it. Ouch. And this one, like this line, the second line, I want this to be a little bit bigger.
There we go. Um, I want something a little bit more informative uh, of when this song was written. Let me see if I can find that information. Sometimes I go to Song Select by CCLI. Um, I do have a sign-in because I'm a music minister at a church. Um, it's actually not this one. Ah. I can never remember my password. Here we go. Um, Don Wirtz and Ellie Singer. Nineteen seventy one. Just gonna take 20th century out, and I'm just gonna put 1971. Oops. Okay. Of course, I'm gonna make this go all the way here. If you're wondering about, uh, you know, the copyright and all of that, um, I just put on the top that it is copyrighted. Typically what happens when you put a copyrighted song on YouTube is that it will get kicked um, in the as uh, it will get flagged as being under copyright and then uh, any ad revenue that it generates will go to the publishers of the song, which is a nice arrangement for them and for me because uh, I can put it on YouTube and um, they have control over it basically if they want it if they want to take to take it down because they want it on YouTube, they can submit a takedown notice. Um, if they want to collect the ad revenue from it, they can collect the ad revenue from it. So um, there you go. So, um, and of course, I list all of the information uh, on there that it's copyrighted by New Spring, ASCAP, administered by Brentwood Benson Music Publishing, Inc. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the lyrics in. <laughs> So I'm going to do this by making a new text region with my text tool somewhere down here. I'm going to start. I'm going to get rid of this camera so I can type. OK. Pestrous C. So the way I do this, I just basically typically center every single one. And then I will hone in uh, on when it stops and starts. That when, when each phrase stops and starts. Oh, thanks. Option plus G. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas. So that's when that phrase stops. Typically what I also do is I will go ahead to my effects and I'll drop a cross dissolve on each side of it in a pretty quick cross dissolve just so that the words come in and fade out at the same time, you know, with the... When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas. You see how that works. Okay, so now... just so I don't have to type everything manually. Off by the terror of tempestuous sea. Sometimes I find it's actually just as fast to type it than it is to copy and paste it from somewhere else. Uh, okay, so here's a little thing that happens. 
um, with Adobe Premiere, whenever you try to paste uh, like a text box or something onto the timeline again, it automatically puts it at the bottom. I hate that. Um, but to keep it from doing that, you have to lock those tracks so that when you paste it, I'm like, paste, you paste it, and where did it go? Oh, it's clear at the bottom. So you want to paste it there. So now it's um, unknown waves before you roam. Unknown waves before you roll. And of course, sometimes when you get lyrics from random places on the internet, it will not be correct. It's actually roll. That's why I say sometimes it's just as fast just to type it. Go back to my essential graphics, center that up. Before you roll, there should be a semicolon after that, according to the hymn book. At okay, so I'm just going to paste that text. I basically, all I'm doing is pasting text boxes and you know, just grabbing at the end of down in peril is eternity, and pasting the lyrics. Center that. At the end of doubt and peril is eternity. So you're going to bring that in, paste that text box again. Basically, we're just lining things up here. So fear and conflict sees. So fear and conflict sees, I put the word weary in, because I've just heard the song sung like that. I like that, sees your weary soul. And there's a period at the end of that one. Yeah, I put two periods. Though fear and conflict sees your weary soul. But just think of stepping on shore. And finding it heaven. And that is semicolon. Just some grammatical things I like to put commas in when there's pauses. Breathing new air. Oops. And, and finding it God. I need to end that one right here. Let's drag this text box over here. God. And that's a semicolon. So this is actually pretty, um, probably pretty boring to watch, but. This has to be done for every YouTube video that I do. Uh, uh, 
of breathing new air and finding it. So I'm not sure why the C is capitalized. It does refer to heaven, but it's not referring to heaven as a proper noun. It's using it as an adjective, so it should not be capitalized. Finding it celestial. Uh This one was just and finding it. And finding it home. Surrounded by the blackness. Oops. This of the darkest night. Oh, how lonely death can be. At the end, waiting love. At the end of this long tunnel is a shining light for For death is swallowed up in up in victory. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab the entire chorus. All of those regions, I'm just going to drop them in. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but... But just think of stepping on shore And finding it heaven Of touching a hand And finding it God's Of breathing new air and finding it celestial of waking up in glory. So this one needs to move. You can kind of see in the waveform where it needs to go. And finding it Drag all of these to the end. I'm going to make this crossfade a little longer. To match the other ones, I'm going to go back to the, the title 
uh, that's up here, I'm going to make this a, a cross dissolve matching the same length. So those will go away at the same time. And then usually at the end here, what I'll do is I'll put in one of my other videos, um, like the tail end of it. You can do what's called a, a, a title card uh, or an end screen on YouTube. And to, f to, to format that, uh, let's just pick um, one of my previous videos. Uh, Death was arrested. And I'm going to just drag that in here. Can I do it in here? See if I can import that. Okay. So what I'll do here, I'm going to just drag this. Oh, I've got to create a sequence. So I'm going to find some place in the chorus. <laughs> right in here oh your grace so free something like that just gonna grab the oops I'm gonna grab this part here copy it paste it over here um, and is this track oh your great hey yeah i'm still on i'm almost done now oh your great so what i'm going to do here i'm going to fade this in i'm going to audio transition this so um fade this is the audio transitions constant. Uh, let's do exponential fade. Oh, your grace. So I'm going to move this over here. Well, actually, let's see what. Switching from this. Oh, your grace. So I'm going to bring the volume of this down. Um, hey, so. And I'm going to scale this like so. I'm going to put it right up, actually right about there. Let's see here. A so free washes over me. You have. Okay, so I'm going to put a text here. Typically, I just say thank you for watching this video. website and uh, maybe I'll come down here and say and I'll put my video here I'm gonna have my face over here and I will put um, pictures of CDs here so the way this is going to work is cross dissolve, fade this in here. I've got some images that I'll throw up on the screen. Um, oh, I need to add albums. Okay, I'm going to move this video down a little bit that and I'm going to stretch this out so what I'm going to do here is I believe I have them in here pictures it's baby hands here's one two three I'll drop these in here Okay. 
Next one. This is going to go here. I'll drag these in one at a time like this. And I'll arrange them so that they are scaled down. I'm going to rotate them a little bit like this. this one same thing this is just if you have something like this I'm just gonna kind of layer them like this rotate obviously not everybody's gonna have three albums that they're you know promoting Something like this, and these can, yeah. And of course, these can animate these coming in. Let's see here. Let's see, we want video. Oh, what could these do? These could do 3D motion. I think I did cube spin before. I have no idea what this flip transition does. Your gray soul. No, I don't want that. How about this? Yeah, that's what I did before. Cube spin. So those will come in. washes over me. You have made us new now, life begins with you. It's your end. So I don't want this to end screen to drag on too long, but I'm just going to go ahead and drop it right there. And I'm going to fade it out. Audio fade. Exponential fade here. And then we want cross dissolve for everything else to kind of put a wrap on everything. I'm going to actually start the audio fade way back here. It's your yeah, okay. So the whole end screen should look like this. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made so I'll have the subscribe thing up here, and this will be a link to the actual video. I may actually need to slide this over a little bit like that. Okay. Us new now life begins with you. It's your end. And then all that stuff will fade at the same time. Okay, cool. So this is pretty much ready to roll. Um, you can preview it. It's going to be really When engulfed by the terror of tempestuous seas, unknown waves before you roll. All right, we're done. Um, I'm going to preview it, but it's not much I can do as far as previewing it because it's so choppy. Um, cool. I'm going to just export. Export media. I'll do a QC pass once it's exported to make sure there's nothing else that needs to be redone or nudged this way or that way. Um, I'm going to go to export output name. I'm just going to make sure it's in the movies folder. And it's going to probably gonna take 30 or 40 minutes to, to render on this system. It may slow everything else down. All right. Boy, I need to get up. Um, thank you for the four or five people that hung on through this grueling live stream. Um, I don't even know how long this took, but... 
Um, putting this together with what I did last night and the two hours or so that I worked uh, when I wasn't streaming, this whole song probably took six to eight hours of work. I don't know. Let's see. How long How long of that have I been going? Um, uh, where does he even say that? Anyway. Um, yeah, between six to eight hours of work for something like this. Um, it's <laughs> making YouTube videos is not as as easy as it as it might look, and by watching the final product, so you've kind of been pulled through the whole live tracking and recording, all of the different mess ups and voice cracks and all of that stuff. Um, it took you through some tuning and editing within Logic Pro. Um, this is, uh, and then of course, um, the, the recording of the video itself. Um, and then, uh, all of the, the things that I did in uh, Adobe Premiere to line up the videos and transition them nicely. And it just, just a lot of work and a lot of editing, but it's well worth it. And, um, the Lord is blessing, uh, the work that I'm doing on, on YouTube. It's reaching people. It's encouraging people. And that's what it's all about. It's about, uh, reaching people and encouraging people and, um, giving, giving people something to listen to, um, something they can watch on YouTube, uh, or even just put on as background music as they're, uh, you know, to encourage them. And, uh, just so you know where I'm coming from, um, I came from a super conservative background, um, when I was growing up and, uh, I went to uh, Pensacola Christian college, got a music education degree, Went to Bob Jones University, got a master's in church music. Um, so all both of those are on the conservative end of the spectrum. Uh, I do have an appreciation for more modern worship music, uh, that as long as it's um, not in an over-the-top style. At my own church, uh, which is local here in Greenville, South Carolina, I am the minister of music, and we, we do typically do two uh, modern worship songs and two traditional songs out of the hymn book. Um, so I, I like all the music, a lot of Christian music. Um, of course, my channel leans heavily more conservative uh, in style. I also love the acapella. Um, but uh, there you have it. Um, the seven or eight hours of, of work that this was. Um, but this should be uh, online probably within, you know, maybe tonight or so. You should see it go up. Thank you for tuning in, for watching, for um, those of you that are supporting me on Patreon, I uh, the Lord bless you very much, uh, and thank you for your support. And um, I don't know that I'll be doing a, a full uh, full on live stream for a while, maybe five or ten thousand subscribers. Hopefully, we'll uh, be picking up some more subscribers. Um, but uh, again, thank you very much. And uh, this is going to render for a while. Um, I've got some things to do this evening, and uh, we will see you all uh, later. And just look for the video when it goes up.